Hello friends, this video on structure of atoms part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let's understand Dalton atomic theory. Dalton gave uh, various theories and the first postulate was that all the matter is made up of very tiny particles and he called it atoms. That is you take any matter, you take apple, banana, pencil, anything you take that is made up of tiny particles and that tiny particle is called atom. Atoms are indivisible particles that cannot be created nor can be destroyed in a chemical reaction. This was also postulated by, uh, by Dalton and this is wrong actually. We will show you it is wrong. We can actually divide atom. Atoms of a given element are identical in mass and chemical properties. You take atom of any given element, for example, you take atom of sodium or you take atom of oxygen or chlorine. Atom of sodium will have identical mass and chemical property. All the atoms of sodium will have identical mass and chemical. For example, you take 10 atoms of sodium. So all these 10 atoms of sodium will have identical mass and chemical properties. Atom of different elements have different mass and chemical property. For example, you take one atom of sodium, one atom of oxygen, one atom of chlorine. All these three will have different mass and different chemical properties. Atom combine in a ratio of small whole number to form compound. For example, water. So you see two hydrogen and one oxygen combines to form water that is in the ratio of whole number. The relative number and the kind of atoms are constant in a given compound. You take any compound, for example, you take water. You take water from various sources. You take water from sea, lake, well, tap, water. The composition of water will be same. The relative number of hydrogen and oxygen atom will be constant. It will always be H2O. Right? Thus, we have seen that Dalton atomic theory was able to explain the law of conservation of mass. That is, you burn a matchstick, the mass before the burning and the mass after the burning will be same. Or you take any any matter, any chemical reaction, the mass of the reactant will be equal to the mass of the product. Law of constant proportion. You take any compound, for example, you take water from any source, the proportion of hydrogen and oxygen in that will be constant. But Dalton theory had limitations. For example, it failed to explain the results of many experiments. For example, a glass went up with silk or fur generate electricity. This was observed but Dalton theory could not explain the reason for this. For example, in this case also if you rub the scale with fur or silk, it will generate the charge and you will see the paper dancing. So Dalton theory could not explain this. Also you take towel in that you rub this balloon and then this balloon will develop a charge and then you try to stick this jar, balloon to a wall, it will get stuck. So this experiment could not be explained by Dalton. Dalton could not explain the subparticles that was discovered later in the 20th century because Dalton, as per Dalton theory, atom is indivisible. So there were various atomic models proposed. We have explained, we have told that Thomson has given a model in 1897. This is Thomson model. Then Rutherford gave a model in 1909, then Bohr gave a model in 1902, and then the quantum model. So we will not study quantum model, we will study these three models. So, and this is the actual model, this is the actual truth. These were all postulates, or you can see, or these were all uh, theory. Because that time, uh, the physicist, the physics was not advanced and we didn't have instruments to actually view a particular atom because they are very small in size. These are all guesswork. So let's study the first model that is Thomson model. See 1898 Mr. J.J. Thomson he proposed that the atom possesses a spherical shape of radius 10 to the power minus 10 meters such a small size and in which the positive charge is uniformly distributed and the electrons are embedded into it in such a manner that it gives the most stable electrostatic arrangement that is these are binded together by electrostatic force of attraction. So that was the model given by Thomson. If you see in this case we have only electron and proton. 
there is no neutron in this case because when the Thomson model was proposed, the neutron was not even discovered. Neutron was discovered in 1920s. Okay. And these, uh, some people call it plum pudding model, some call it raisin pudding model, some call it watermelon model. You see, it's like a plum cake. The red part, the positive part is the cake and the, uh, the electrons here are icing on the cake. See, this model could explain the overall neutrality of the whole atom because it was uh, the whole uh, atom was positive and it had negative electrons so overall it was neutral but it was not consistent with the late results we'll see that later uh, some experiments were performed and those experiments were not consistent with this model okay and as I told, please note, neutron was not discovered at this time. So there is no neutron in this model. So on the basis of Thomson model explained how atom is neutral as a whole. See, in this case, we see there is a positive charge and similar amount of negative charge is there by these electrons. So overall positive and negative gives a neutral charge. Right? So if, let's suppose, it has 5 unit of positive charge, then it will have pi electron so overall it will be neutral so with this it, it explains the neutrality of the atom thank you visit our website examfear.com to watch more and more quality education videos you can also attend free online tests that are there in our website you can also get access to tons of free study materials and you can also find free tutors and mentors in this website thanks a lot for watching